number 21's in his backfield and has had a huge first half. And you hear the chorus of boos that Ian Tomlinson, who averages 100 and almost 22 a game, and he's got over 100 in the first half. Halftime, 13 to nothing is our score at McAvee Coliseum in Oakland. So let's go over and join the guys, Stu and Mike, standing by with Alexis Halftime Show. Fellas. Welcome to the Toyota, to the Lexus Halftime Show. Fans in Oakland, despite being down 13 to zip, they are still as rabid and as geeked up as ever. They still got a whole nother half of football to play. We've had a whole nother game to play already. First game of the doubleheader, the Redskins and the Vikings from our nation's capital. Chris Berman there the entire game with his gang of merry men. Boom. All right, Stu, thank you very much. To say the least, a poignant day and evening in the nation's capital, 184 beams of light on the Pentagon, remembering five years ago, 9-11-01. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Berman. Good to see you once again, along with Steve Young, Michael Irvin, Tom Jackson. Team this weekend, the road teams coming in at the big yeah. Yeah. stadiums, home opener, and the road teams having their way. Could Minnesota do the same in Washington against the Redskins? Well, certainly the fireworks, a fever pitch, almost 91,000 at FedEx Field. We're hoping to see the Redskins positively, absolutely deliver on this night. But on the very first series, it was Brad Johnson throwing deep a lot and early area not to Troy Williams. Steve. Brad Johnson, 16 to 23, 230 yards, one touchdown, no interceptions. I think we'll see the same thing next week from Brad. Very Chester consistent. Taylor running up the middle for a touchdown, Tom. They did abort the extra Get point. Get used to him running over the left side of that line, boom. Antoine Randall. What? And then on this punt return, we're not done yet, Mike. Hold on. We got one more. What? most electrifying play of the night. Yes, he is, Boom, and this is why they brought him in from the Pittsburgh Steelers, to give them a boost on special teams. The counter screen to Liddell Dicky Betts, who guitars it down for big yardage on the screen for Mark Brunell, and then Clinton Portis didn't start, but he finished this drive, and the Redskins had themselves a 10-6 lead. The Redskins wanting more. Brunell to Santana Moss. They finally opened up the playbook. We didn't see it all August. Well, Mark Brunell sets his feet, actually follows through and goes forward with the throws. He throws the ball pretty well. He just backs up too much. 13-9 at the half, but the first drive of the third quarter, Brad Johnson, cuckoo could you Marcus Robinson. <laughs> a touchdown, 16-13 Vikes. And then we're tied at 64th quarter. Under three minutes to go, Johnson to Williamson. Penalty skins. And the, the Vikings look poised in the whole second half. That's all about Brad Johnson under pressure. Ryan Longwell, 31-yard field goal, just over a minute to go. Bang! And the Vikings lead it 19-16, but the Redskins have time against Brad Childress's Vikes. What would they do with it? They got a pretty good kick return. And then Mark Brunel to Santana Moss. And he had that feel, the field goal in overtime coming up. But no chip shot. A 48-yarder for John Hall, and no shot. Yes. Boomer, you got to hit the net. You, I, you might have missed the field goal, but you have to hit the net at this level. At this level, you have to hit the net. And so the Minnesota Vikings come into Washington and beat Joe Gibbs and the Redskins 19-16, and Brad Childress coaching his first game ever in the National Football League comes on the road and beats a Hall of Fame coach, Joe Gibbs. So another road team, another first-time yep. coach. We still know nothing. 1916 <laughs> Vikings. Stu? Well, that's the story in Washington, D.C. here in Oak Town. Stewart's got alongside Mike Ditka. Coach, the Chargers came in looking for their sixth straight win over the Raiders. What do you see that they're doing that has just kept Oakland on its heels? Well, sometimes when you're trying to go forward, you take a couple steps backward. Right now, Looking at the Raiders, they are not a good football team. They're not playing with any inspiration, and they don't know like they, they don't they don't act like they know what they are doing out there. Come on, pick it up and do something. This is not a good football team. They're supposed to be the intimidating kind of team, but Ladanian Tomlinson has 101 yards, and we're at the break. Basically, one big play. But that, that shouldn't demoralize the whole football team. Get out there and get after people. This is a great run, there's no question about it. The Raiders should be playing better than they're playing. That was LT over the top for the touchdown. This halftime show is presented by Lexus and the new 303 horsepower GSH 350. Every year, Pamplona has a running of the Bulls. 
Uh, here at Sports Center, we have a similar tradition. <laughs> Is it fun? No. But is it important? Major League Baseball on ESPN. Wednesday from Detroit. One more time, the Rangers' lack of pitching became their Achilles heel. But they hope to make a difference in the playoffs when they visit the Tigers. Rangers, Tigers, Wednesday live on ESPN. Imagine yourself holding on to a moving rocket as it propels at speeds over 300 miles per hour. With ESPN, you can experience the fastest quarter mile in all of sports. The best in each class. Top, Top fuel. fuel. Funny, Funny car. car. Pro, Pro stuff. stuff. Motorcycles. Motorcycles. Pushing their machines as fast as the laws of physics will allow. NHRA Drag Racing on ESPN. Welcome back to the Lexus Halftime Show. Some NFL news, Deion Branch's holdout is over as the Patriots traded him to the Seahawks for a 2007 first-round pick, a Super Bowl 39 MVP, entering the last year of a five-year deal, held out of mandatory minicamp and all of training camp. Elsewhere, according to ESPN's Chris Mortensen, a source close to Trent Green says the Chiefs QB will likely miss at least the team's next two games due to that concussion. A CAT scan and MRI were both negative. Team spokesman and no comment. Green is still in the hospital. Some baseball, A's and Twins. Twins begin the night just two back of the Tigers in the Central. Frank Thomas has been ridiculous. Home run now in six straight games. This one, top of the four, his sixth straight game with the shot, 36 of the year. That's an A's record. Bottom six, Twins up 3-1. Torrey Hunter, peace, his 24th home run of the year. Twins go up 4-1. They win it 9-4. So here you go, up to the minute standings in the AL Central and wild card. The ridiculously hot Red Hot Twins, just a game and a half back of the Tigers, and they now lead the defending champion White Sox by two in the wild card. White Sox are playing the Angels tonight. Over in the senior circuit, Mets and Marlins, Anabel Sanchez. First start since his no-hitter, and he came out on the roll, honoring those lost to 9-11 five years ago to the day, striking out David Wright, then Jose Valentin, and then Jose Reyes. Sanchez, eight Ks in seven innings. He also went two for four at the RB. Bottom four, Dan Uglet is straight ridiculous. His 24th home run of the year matches a home run record for a rookie second baseman. He went five for five on the night. Bottom seven, Cody Ross already with two homers, make it three. His third dinger of the night, Ross seven RBI, Marlins lay a beating on the Mets, they beat him 16 to five. Your NL wildcard standings, the Fish now, second place all by the Lonesomes, just two back of the Padres. And remember, the Marlins were once 20 games under 500. Banana story going on in South FLA. Right now here in Oakland, Sean Merriman has two of the charges, four first half sacks. Rocking Aaron Brooks world, San Diego leads Oakland 13 to nothing. This halftime show presented by Lexus and the new 303 horsepower GSH 350. We're coming back. season opener Dolphins and Steelers Thursday Pittsburgh capped the victory over Miami Heath Miller as cool as the other side of the pillow 87 yard touchdown catch from backup Charlie Batch that is your perfect play LaDainian Tomlinson had 500 yard games last season his first half of 2006 he's got a buckle one and counting Chargers lead the Raiders 13 to nothing
generally considered to be cricket's greatest ever all-rounder, Garfield Sobers was a prolific batsman and versatile bowler whose career contained several of cricket's landmark moments. In 1958, he hit Pakistan for a then world record 365 and scored a century in cricket's first ever tied test match against Australia in 1961. In 1968, he again rewrote the record books, becoming the first batsman to hit six sixes in a single over. And he's done it! He could do anything on a cricket field, and I haven't seen anyone since, and I don't think there's anyone before him uh, who would compare. Sir Gary Sobers was knighted for his services to cricket by the Queen in Barbados in 1975. Don't miss the series The Legends of Cricket on ESPN. Governor Schwarzenegger ready for some football. So is a packed house here at McAfee Coliseum in Oakland. But the San Diego Chargers, the visitors, on top, 13 to nothing. As a matter of fact, Governor Schwarzenegger is going to be joining us here in the third quarter. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler, Dick Vermeil, Ron Jaworski. Fellas, impressions of the first half right now. San Diego's defense playing very well. Well, I think San Diego's big people, offensive linemen and defensive linemen, are dominating the ball game. Positive for them. Raiders are having a tough time. Aaron Brooks is really having a tough time. And that's the key. Tom Walsh, the offensive coordinator for the Raiders, has been away from football for seven years. We're going to find out in the second half if he has the ability to adjust because his tackles are having a tough time. He's going to have to keep a tight end to help those tackles out or a back end on their side to chip. They finally, in that last drive, went to Randy Moss. He had three catches before coming out and talked on the sideline with Art Shell. The story offensively tonight, though, has not been Moss. It's been the guy that we expected it to be. Let Andy and Tomlinson, who has been sensational, had over 100 yards rushing in the first half. So we open up the second half. And drop of the ball at the goal line is Michael Turner, but he regains possession, and he gets out and goes down to the 20-yard line. Let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Bon? This isn't exactly the way Art Shell envisioned his return to the Raiders, but he said it doesn't matter whether it's the first game, the second game, the 15th game. There's absolutely nothing that my team's doing well. No specifics, just wants to see better overall play. On the Chargers side, Marty Schottenheimer not particularly pleased with his offense. LT's got his numbers, but he says we're settling for field goals instead out of finishing off our drives. Philip Rivers, they want to gradually move him into things. What times he's thrown, Schottenheimer's been pleased with him. Empty backfield right now, and now Tomlinson and Lorenzo Neal both will rejoin Philip Rivers behind the first start quarterback. And it's Tomlinson, and this is what they need. The Raiders need a stop to open up the third quarter. Let's check the first half numbers. Statistically, you see the rushing yards and almost all of that with Anian Tomlinson. Not a lot of passing by either team. Well, total yards right there by the Oakland Raiders. Not very good. 45 yards only the entire first half. But Danian made more than that on one run. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. that's exactly right. He had a 58-yard run. Keep in mind, though, the Raiders are only two plays away from having the lead. It is not that far out of reach. 13 to nothing. Second down and 10. Neal in motion back toward the ball. Tomlinson again, and now he's tripped up in the backfield. Michael Huff, the rookie out of Texas, makes the stop. That's two plays in a row he's made. Two plays in a row, and they're, they're excited about this young first-round pick. Safeties have not been a strong part of Raider defense for a few years. Here he comes on a safety blitz to the outside of the right side of your screen, nails him for a loss. Third and long, let's see how San Diego handles third and long. You want to stop LeDanian Tomlinson. You must get penetration into the backfield. His worst game a year ago was against the Philadelphia Eagles. They hit him before he got going. Michael Huff, who made that tackle, wearing number 24. It used to be Charles Woodson. 
Willie Brown before that. Third and long. Rivers quick throw. And no flag as the ball was intended for Eric Parker. Fabian Washington had a little bump on him over there, but it's three and out, and the Raiders couldn't ask for anything better. First three and out for the Chargers tonight, as a matter of fact. They don't have many of them. Nope. They were one of the most efficient offenses in football last year. They didn't have as many drives as a lot of teams, but they were more efficient with those drives. So Cyphers will punt. Chris Carr waiting on the other end. Cyphers was a Pro Bowl alternate a year ago. He only had 26 punts returned all year. That's pretty darn good. This one will be. And Carr got out to the 40-yard line. So good starting field position. 46-yard kick, five-yard return. Randy Moss set to put the hat on and see what he can do for the Raiders' offense as they trail 13 to nothing, but they've got the ball when we come back. the running of the Bulls. Uh, here at Sports Center, we have a similar tradition. Is it fun? No. But is it important? Major League Baseball on ESPN. Wednesday from Detroit. One more time, the Rangers' lack of pitching became their Achilles heel, but they hope to make a difference in the playoffs when they visit the Tigers. Rangers, Tigers, Wednesday live on ESPN. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or of any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by the all-new Mazda CX-7, the SUV you never saw coming. Test Drive Unlimited, available for the Xbox 360. Pioneer Pure Vision Plasmas, we push the boundaries of high definition. And the Men's Warehouse, need a suit? Back at McAvee Coliseum in Oakland, the Raiders trail the Chargers, but they got excellent starting field position after getting a defensive stop on the opening march of the third quarter. So Aaron Brooks will set him up at the 40-yard line. And back to throw he goes, and out completes... And it's Randy Moss, a nice move, and Moss has got 15 and more. Tiptoes out of bounds, and he's got a first down in Charger territory, a pickup of 20. Aaron Brooks does an excellent job of finding the single coverage on Randy Moss and takes advantage of it. Quentin Jammer giving a big cushion, outstanding anticipation by Brooks, gets the ball with space for Moss to get upfield. The officials with a flag down have a conference. It's back there in the defensive secondary and here's Bill Levy our head referee with a call taunting number 18 of the Raiders through the ball the opponent in the out of bounds area 15 yard penalty it'll be first and 10 boy and Go ahead. Say it, right? just just when <laughs> something goes right for Randy Moss he turns around and backfires on it get a look at the end of the play and he threw it to Nate Kading. I don't know what uh, that had to do with yeah, anything. I don't, I don't see that. That might be a little weak. He's taking the rule a little too seriously. I think so. So now, instead of way down into Charger territory, it's first and ten. It's back at the 45-yard line. Four catches. A lot of them short throws. And Moss has done the rest with a run after the catch. Brooks. Here comes the heat again. And down he goes again. Oh, That's the fifth sack. And this one's Jamal Williams. The big nose tackle. Well, we welcome the governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger, to the booth. We just saw the governor grab the football helmet. You were ready for some football. We're having some pretty good football out here oh, tonight. This is unbelievable. I think that uh, since Art Shell came back 
and is the coach. Uh, I think this is a miracle performance here today. Arnold, they talk about uh, the NFL trying to get a team back in the state of California, and that was something that Paul Tagliabue wanted to do before he left. Roger Goodell, I'm sure, is going to carry that on. What do you think the latest is there? Well, I think that we have a good chance. I don't want to just have one extra team. I want to have two teams. I think Anaheim can take one and Los Angeles can take one. I think that you're ready for it. There's a huge audience out there that wants to, you know, uh, watch football, live football. I think it's exciting. It's one of the greatest sports, and I think that we deserve it. It wouldn't do any good to move one of these two teams, though, would it, into uh, no, a new market? I think they're in a perfect uh, location. I think we need some new teams, you know, and I think that uh, I hopefully that very soon we're going to get the word from them. Uh, from the NFL that we're going to have a new team. All right. Well, got a third down coming up. We're going to come back to you in just a second. Important third down, but it's a long one. What else is new? It's been third and long for the Raiders all evening. Well, this one's third and 16. How many times is this, Dick? Five times at least, yeah. third and 10 or yeah, more? That's good. And it's Brooks. Waits and fires and completes it. And it's not going to be enough for the first down, though, as he got it to about the 49-yard line of pickup of 11. A lot of the other things around the NFL, Governor, have been talked about, uh, especially with the Balco situation going on around here. The National Football League has talked more about steroid testing or human growth hormone, and I know back in your day you've admitted that you did that. Uh, uh, you, your stand on that right now? Well, I think it's good to do uh, doping tests, and uh, the trick always is to find a way of really doing true testing, right. because the drug companies have uh, an attack for a uh, defense for every attack. So as soon as you have a test, then they have a way around that test. So if you can figure that out, I think it's a good idea. In the meantime, I think it's great to watch football. These are the greatest athletes. Leckler with a punt and a fair catch by Parker will be taken at the 10-yard line. A 40-yard punt and no return again. And that's been the story for Leckler for a lot of years. Warren Sapp been a long night for him. 13 to nothing with 11.25 remaining in the third quarter. And the Raiders kind of shaking their heads right now, trying to get something going. Well, I know as we look back, it's the fifth anniversary, as everybody knows, of the tragedy of 9-11. And all of us remember where we were. And, Governor, I know you got a special guest up here right after this snap. We're going to come back up here in the booth and talk a little bit with Captain Tim Buckley. First down, meanwhile, for the Chargers at the 10-yard line. Not good starting field position. And it's going to be a gain of... About one for Ladanian Tomlinson. I'll let you do the honors, Governor, as we come back in the booth, and uh, you got a special guest up here with us. Well, as you know, Tim Buckley is a one of those courageous firefighters that uh, went when we had uh, the 9/11 uh, tragic uh, terrorist attack. Uh, he went from California back there to help those firefighters, and he's a very heroic man. He was the back there for a long time helping and really risking his own life to save other lives. So he's one of our great heroes. Tim, we know that uh, it has obviously changed this country and changed all of us. Uh, I guess I just want to ask you how it's changed you over the last five years. Well, you know, it, it, it changes a lot of the way we think, and you got to you really think more when you're going to types of calls and what to expect. You don't know what to expect anymore after something like that. Ed, five years ago, what were you thinking this morning when you got out of bed? Uh, five years ago this morning, I was woken up by one of the other crew members coming in saying one of the planes hit the tower. And then next thing you know, a few hours later, we're packing up to go. Well, we obviously, uh, as firefighters, it's just unbelievable because, you know, it's the most selfless profession, you know, to risk your own lives, to save other lives. I mean, I make a lot of action heroes in my life, but those are the true action yeah. heroes. Isn't that the truth? Third down and six. Pass is incomplete. And that's going to bring up a punting situation for the Chargers. Captain Buckley, we want to thank you. Thank and you. all the guys that do the work that you do. Governor, thank you very much for having you. us here. Thank nice you. to have you up here. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. You guys enjoy yeah. the rest of the football game. Thank Absolutely, you. we will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Arnold Schwarzenegger, the governor of the state of California, and Captain Tim Buckley, one of the firefighters who helped. And, of course, everybody remembers where they were and what was going on five years ago and the moment of silence we had before the game tonight, the national anthem. You just had this feeling in your stomach. Everybody was holding American flags, and then we had the wow, fire the by, the, uh, by the fighter planes, and uh, it was quite a scene here as I know it was back in Washington for the Redskins and the Vikings game. We got a timeout with... 9.53 remaining in the third quarter. It's 13 to nothing, Chargers in front. I used to be a chiropractor. I had to give it up because of a problem with my hands. I started playing poker pretty seriously. 
My wife said, why not give it a go at the World Series? Sometimes I still can't believe I'm the reigning world champion of poker. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! My name is Joe Hashem. Who's next? Every Sunday, start your NFL weekend. And start it right with NFL Sunday Countdown. Chris Berman, your host for two hours of news, information, and updates. It'll get you ready for a full day of football. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Brad Nessler, Dick Vermeil, Ron Jaworski, Bonnie Bernstein with you in Oakland where the Raiders have good starting field position. Their offense has only run seven plays in San Diego territory tonight. They work from their own 44-yard line, trailing by 13. And it's Jordan, Lamont Jordan. They have had trouble establishing the run. Quite frankly, they have trouble establishing anything, whereas the Chargers really haven't had that problem because LaDainian Tomlinson had his best first quarter in his brilliant career, 115 total yards and a touchdown. And this has been the big problem for Aaron Brooks. Just a swarming San Diego defense. Five sacks already led by Merriman and Castillo and Williams in that game. Let's see if they can hold him out on second down at six. Here they come. And looking for a place to hide, and they got him again. And it's Merriman. Boy, is he something else. He is. But, but Brad, this offense is not on schedule. You finally had a good first down run of four yards. You get in that second down situation, second and six. Why do you have to drop back? You got to get in that third down situation where you have your entire playbook available. Guys like Merriman has unbelievable quickness, unbelievable agility, jumping over people, tracking Brooks down. You've got to make these guys defend the run as well as the pass. They are not forcing them to play two-dimensional defense. Wade Phillips, defensive coordinator of the Chargers. His team has really done a number. This is the shortest third down they've had, I think, all night. Brooks back to throw again. Steps and waits and fires, and it's incomplete. The closest guy was Ronald Curry. And they'll have to punt it right back. You know, and the defense, the Raider defense, has done a real good job this second half. They've come out, shut them down yeah, they have. three snaps and out twice. Gain some momentum. Now the offense just got to contribute. They get back in the football right. game. And, and, and when we spoke with Coach Shell, he talked about winning the real estate, coming off the ball and winning the space that that guy occupies. We haven't seen that physical approach, that attitude, style of running. Uh, uh, and obviously, you know, I, I believe they're calling too many of the deep drops in the passing game, and that's allowing that great pass rush the Chargers to tee off on them. Only one out of seven on third down conversions for the Raiders tonight. Leckler. And Parker's going to get out of the way. This is going to be a great kick. That's a nice coverage. Punt. Wow, great punt. Way yeah. down at about the five-yard line. 44-yard kick. It'll be the Chargers in a hole, but they've got the lead and the football when we come back with 8.23 to go in the third. Pamplona has a running of the Bulls. Uh, here at Sports Center, we have a similar tradition. Is it fun? No. But is it important? The Champions Tour presents the 2006 3M Championship. For the sixth consecutive year, the TPC Twin Cities hosted the event. Entering the final round, rookie David Edwards trailed the leader by three strokes. And after bogeys on the opening two holes, he fell five shots behind. But Edwards found his game and made six birdies in the final 11 holes to win his first title since his win on the PGA Tour in 1993, a victory drought spanning 13 years. Edwards won in only his 11th start on the Champions Tour and moved into the top 10 in the season-long Charles Schwab Cup race. His career largest paycheck also moved him into the top 10 on this year's Champions Tour money list. Congratulations, David Edwards, winner of the 2006 3M Championship. 
That group is going to try to make it hard on Phillip Rivers and the Chargers offense who have huddled in their own end zone. They're going to start at about the seven yard line is where they finally marked it. Worst starting field position of the night for San Diego. Rivers has handled himself well. They haven't asked him to do that much. Because of this guy, Tomlinson. And again, they do a good job of bringing him down. You know, like Rob Ryan's defense has done a really good job this second half. Well, Phillip Rivers, we talked a lot about it, making his first career start after sitting behind Drew Brees for two years. And two other guys in that class have done pretty well, fellas. <laughs> you bet. One did pretty well the other day, though he got beat on Monday night. Or the man in there. Ben Roethlisberger, the youngest quarterback to win a Super Bowl, over 5,000 yards. Eli lost to Peyton, but he went over the 5,000 yard mark in that game last night. Second down and a long seven. And it's Tomlinson, and he got out to the 12 or 13 yard line. Derek Burgess made the stop, the captain of the defense. You know, Warren Sapp did a real good job there, Ron. He didn't make the tackle, but he broke up the play. And, also, and also, you mentioned Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator for the Raiders, has changed his game plan a bit. They're not playing that nickel defense where they were bringing uh, Burgess in in that, uh, uh, that secondary form. So now they're playing with their base 4 3, four down linemen, three linebackers. Let's see if they can stop him again. They have a couple of times already this quarter. Third down. Only one pass thrown to Antonio Gates, and that's a little strange. I'm sure the Raiders know where he is. Third down and four. Tomlinson, safe call, but going nowhere. And the Chargers will have to punt again. Verdell Sands again, along with Warren Sapp. And... Third three and out. Yeah, and Marty obviously being very conservative with that call there. Confident his defense can keep playing like they've been playing. Didn't want to take any chances down there deep in his own territory. And Warren Sapp did an outstanding job of taking on the double team and the trap block and held the point of attack and allowed the linebackers to make the play. Sapp playing well. Cyphers to punt. Chris Carr should get a pretty good play on this as you look behind Mike Cyphers. Boy, High kick, a mile play. in the air. Carr waiting and waiting and waiting, and no fair catch. He's going to pay guy. the price. Back at the 35-yard line, 49 kick with great, 49-yard kick with great hang time. Antonio Cromartie, number one draft choice, makes the tackle. See if the Raiders can get the offense in gear when we come back. You want game? This fall, ESPN Game Plan has up to 150 extra college football games. Key matchups and rivalries from major conferences, all available when you order your exclusive ESPN Game Plan pay-per-view package. It's maximum college football. Get full access to live college football games online with ESPN's Game Plan. To order Game Plan, go to ESPN.com and search Game Plan. Wednesday from Detroit. One more time, the Rangers' lack of pitching became their Achilles' heel, but they hope to make a difference in the playoffs when they visit the Tigers. Rangers, Tigers, Wednesday live on ESPN. The Raider Nation still waiting for the Raiders' offense with 6-12 remaining in the third quarter. Brad Nessler, Dick Vermeil, Ron Jaworski, Bobby Bernstein with you from Magaly Coliseum in Oakland where the Raiders try to avoid a sixth straight loss to San Diego. Brooks, little draw play. Jordan. And Lamont got out 
Picked up about four yards on the play. Steve Foley, the starting linebacker, out for the rest of the season. He'll miss the entire year without pay, at least for now, as a result of several gunshot wounds to his leg, his hand, and his thigh. He suffered after a car chase between himself and an off-duty police officer last week. A very strange story. According to police reports, the off-duty officer started pursuing Foley in the wee hours of uh, September 3rd on suspicion of drunk driving. We'll talk more about that. A lot of his teammates have been honoring him in different ways tonight that only Steve would know about. He's still recuperating in the hospital as Aaron Brooks goes back to throw in the pass. He is broken up and almost intercepted by Sean Phillips, Steve Foley's replacement. Let's check in with Bonnie. Foley just having to turn 31 today, Brad. Probably not the way he imagined spending his birthday. If there is any good news, he got out of ICU a couple of days, and he is listed in fair condition, but to be honest, when I talk to a lot of the players, he's still heavily sedated a lot of the time and isn't in great shape. Everybody seems to be keeping a pretty tight lid on this thing. San Diego County Sheriff's Department said that Foley's blood alcohol test will be back this week. Week, they will continue to gather as the evidence and then in the next few weeks the DA will decide whether this is going to trial or not. All right, Bonnie, thanks. Brooks comes up firing incomplete. Another drop pass. Courtney Anderson, the tight end. He's dropped all three of them. Coach, you started out the game, but what has hurt the Raiders? Yeah. Penalties and, and drop. drop balls. Yeah. That pattern is staying with this game. Aaron made a nice throw there. He stroked it in there. He got to come up with a catch. You know, third and six, you're going to squeeze the ball in the tight areas.